Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about a skincare brand that is available through Walmart. It is a very affordable skincare brand and labels itself as being clean. I'm going to go through every single product that is currently available in the brand. I'm going to go through the ingredients with you and explain to you why it is or is not a good skincare product to consider. So if you want an entire brand overview and kind of review, I guess, then this is the video for you. To be clear, this is not from me testing these products. This is an ingredients-based review, which means that we are looking at whether there are ingredients included in these skincare products that have scientifically proven or, or you know, tested results that are good or bad for the skin. So you can do a lot of assessment of a product before you even spend your money by just looking at the ingredients and that's what we're gonna do here. Thank you for subscribing to the channel by hitting that red subscribe button and following Allure Beauty over on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and like it. And if you like videos like this, I'm going to plug a few of my recent videos that I would really like for you to check out if you haven't already seen them, all of which I will link in the upper right-hand corner. The first is my first anti-haul video that I did. And in that I talk about not only makeup, but a lot of skincare products that are new on the market and why I am not interested in them. I also included some recent purchases of skincare that is great. So if that is something that sounds uh, appealing to you, I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. The second one is makeup based and that is Kaleidos' brand new Make Your Escape collection, which I don't get tired of plugging because I really enjoy not only the brand, but also pretty much every product that they've released so far. So if makeup is something that you want to check out, especially with a nice cool indie brand, I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. And last is I think my most recent video, which is more of a kind of consumer protection type of video where I talk about the existing and proliferating, it seems, issue with Sephora's review system and why I really think it's not reliable or trustworthy. So if that is something that piques your interest, I'll also link that in the upper right hand corner for you to check out. All right, let's get talking about have I even said what this video is about yet? It's about Clean Beauty, which is, like I said, an affordable skincare brand that labels itself as clean and literally has the name clean, although it's spelled C-L-E-E-N, um, that's available through Walmart. Now on my lips, I am wearing one of the NYX Intense Butter Glosses, I think they are. I don't know what the shade is. But what I've realized throughout wearing this is that even after wiping off some of it in the inner ring of the mouth, it transfers onto the teeth. So I will try to check periodically, but if you see bright pink on my lips, uh, on my teeth as I'm speaking, I'm sorry, that's just how it's going this day. Okay, so let's jump over to the Walmart website and look at the overall claims and self-description for the clean brand. So it says, effective, clean, inclusive skincare for everyone, all under $10. So that's great, very affordable to make sure that everything is actually under $10. Then if we go to more of a full description, it says clean beauty is effective. We like things that work and feel great to make sure of it. We do our research and partner with beauty chemists who use innovative ingredients that make a difference. We're done wasting time and money on things that don't work. You should be too. Choose effective. Okay, there's a little um, preview for you that I think that it's pretty ironic that they are making these specific claims. Beauty chemists are not necessarily individuals who are looking to actually get specific skincare ingredients that are good for your skin and avoid the ones that are harmful for your skin. The next claim is clean beauty is clean. We use high quality ingredients that are always cruelty free and vegan. That's great that it's cruelty free and vegan. Formulated without parabens, phthalates, synthetic fragrances and dyes, mineral oils and more. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there. The science is pretty clear that things like parabens are not actually shown, proven to have a significant uh, deleterious effect on health when applied topically. If you don't believe me, you can ask most dermatologists who will confirm that. Um, things like fragrances are, are great to exclude, although it specifies synthetic fragrances, which kind of perks my ears up because natural quote unquote fragrances can be just as, just as if not more harmful to the skin 
And mineral oils, again, mineral oil can be a great benefit to the skin. It's just another one of those ingredients that has gotten a bad rap without the scientific backing for that negative reputation, unfortunately. So going back to the claims, we hold ourselves to ultra high standards and we like ingredients that work without the worry. Why choose anything else when you can choose clean? So here, um, I did a more full explanation in the video that I will link in the upper right hand corner for you of why the term clean is absolutely meaningless. It does, it's, there's no standard, there's no scientific standard, there's no industry standard for what that term means, as opposed to maybe a more firm, although there's also variation in the term organic in your food. Um, unlike something like that, where there are regulations, there are requirements you would have to meet, the term clean is a term that companies are using more recently as a marketing tool to make people feel like they're making a healthier, cleaner choice, whatever that means, but it doesn't, it has no substance to it. So, and, and in fact, a lot of the time, going back to the example of a natural fragrance versus a synthetic fragrance, the brand will say, well, it's clean because it's a natural fragrance. Doesn't mean it's not harmful. There are very, very harmful natural ingredients out there. So the term clean does not make something good or better. Again, a more full explanation will be in that video that I linked for you if you wanna know more. And last, clean beauty is inclusive. We care about your skin and hers and his and theirs too. We made clean beauty with everyone in mind and believe everyone should have access to safe and effective products. It's time to democratize clean beauty. Join the movement. Once again, I don't know anything about the people who actually started this brand, but it bothers me that they're marketing inclusivity to try to sell their label of clean. When I know after looking at just a few, I haven't looked at all of them, but just a few products in this line that they have very um, unsafe ingredients in at least several of their products. So I'm all for inclusivity in terms of not creating barriers or inequality to access to good skincare or beauty or anything for people depending on their skin tone, uh, race or any or gender or anything like that. But I don't think that this brand, from what I've seen so far, lives up to this claim. And I'll go with you through every single one of the products in the brand, which I have not yet done, to see if they do live up to this claim or any of the other ones that they've made. So let's go ahead and jump into that. We're gonna go through every single product. So the first product is the Vitamin C Papaya Glow Serum for one fluid ounce. You're going to pay $9.97. It says this is a water-like serum infused with vitamin C. So it's supposed to brighten dark spots. Let's jump to the ingredients and see what's inside. So fantastic that the very second ingredient is a type of vitamin C followed by glycerin so you immediately get that good active ingredient. I don't know if I'd call it active, the, the, the good main ingredient and then glycerin to help hydrate. Then quickly followed by several fruit extracts, which is great too. The Camellia sinensis leaf extract, that is another word for green tea, which is an antioxidant plant extract, which is great. Turmeric root extract, grapeseed extract. So we're going so far so good, more fruit extracts, but then a little bit after the middle mark, or maybe just at the middle mark, we start to get these uh, citrus-based extracts. Now, the problem with citrus-based extracts, or especially with the citrus oils, so if you see something on a label like lemon peel oil, or lemon oil, lime oil, um, orange oil, bitter orange oil, although those types of things are great for the body when you ingest them and they have a um, good number of antioxidants when you're eating, for example, an orange, they, when applied topically on the skin, have um, a photosensitizing effect. So these are not the best ingredients to be applying topically to the skin, and they are oftentimes used for the purpose of adding fragrance to the product, and fragrance is not skincare. Fragrance is damaging and irritating to the skin, period, no matter what. So it is something that is best left out of a skincare product. 
So unfortunately, we have all these several um, citrus-based extracts. Now, I, to be fair, it seems like the extracts are going to be less potent than inserting the actual oil of the uh, orange or the lemon or the lime, but they still do have that danger of being photosensitizing. So these are not great things to have included, the grapefruit to, to have included in the product. The Anthemis nobilis flower extract. Um, flower extract should also perk your ears because a lot of times those can be fragrances, but in this instance, this is actually chamomile, which acts as an antioxidant and has a kind of soothing effect on the skin. So that's good. Do we have anything else that seems problematic? Um, oh, we end with alcohol. So alcohol is another skin irritant. It dries out the skin. It damages the skin barrier. Luckily, there's only a small amount because it's the very last ingredient in this product. But again, a truly good product for the skin would not include this ingredient. So would I recommend the vitamin C papaya glow serum? I would not. Moving on to the next product, which is the avocado hemp butter sleep mask. For two fluid ounces, you're going to be paying again, $9.97. This is supposed to be a rich mask that helps nourish the skin. It says it works while you sleep, meaning it's a moisturizer. They're calling it a mask, I guess, again, as a marketing tool, but something that you put on your skin and you sleep with it overnight, or if you put it on in the daytime and wear it all day and then wash it off, it's not a mask, it's a moisturizer. Can you imagine if some company, and maybe they have, I don't know, but can you imagine a skincare company coming out with um, a full day avocado hemp seed mask? Apply it in the morning after washing your face and then wash it off before you go to bed. Okay, that's a moisturizer. But anyway, that's just, you know, no harm there. It's just more of a, a a silly way to name a product. Let's go to the ingredients now. Water, glycerin, good. Cannabis, sativa seed oil, good. You have the avocado oil. And then pretty early on, you see this lavender flower stem extract. Again, this is used as a method to add fragrance to the product which is not good for the skin. We again get that bitter orange leaf extract, which we've already discussed. The jasmine flower extract is another thing that is a fragrant plant oil that's not great for the skin. Again, I think the extract is probably less potent and damaging than the actual oil of the jasmine flower, the jasmine plant, but still not something that is worth having that risk. It's good that we have these fruit extracts from the apple, the cinnamon bark extract, also potentially hazardous fragrant ingredient. So for this product, we don't have to go far before we run into these problematic ingredients. Just briefly looking over the rest of it, I also immediately noticed the sandalwood extract, which is, it's not, I think it's not as potent as the other extracts that we've talked about that are fragrant and volatile, not good for the skin, but it also does have the potential to be sensitizing to the skin. So once again, would I spend my $10 on this moisturizer? No, I would not. Next up product is the Lavender Chamomile Night Cream, two fluid ounces, $9.97. Now immediately, if the ingredients reflect the name of the product, this is not gonna be a good product because if it contains that lavender oil, it's not something you want to be leaving on your skin. It says that it's supposed to be soothing and nourishing, which should mean that it doesn't contain anything that is irritating or photosensitizing. But right away, it says it's infused with a lavender oil and chamomile extract. Chamomile does have a calming effect on the skin, but lavender oil does not fall in that same boat. So let's go to the ingredients and right towards the beginning, we see that lavender oil, which we already discussed why that is problematic. We do have good things like the chamomile, the mushroom, the cucumber, watermelon, uh, glycerin, aloe leaf. So we do have ingredients in this product that are calming on the skin and soothing to the skin, but it makes no sense to then combine that with a an ingredient that is doing the exact opposite of that, which is to actively irritate the skin. So this, pro this product would be great actually from what I can tell if it had just excluded that one fragrant ingredient. So would I recommend that product? No, 
I wouldn't. And a few things I wanna jump in and say before we move to the next product. It does have the lavender oil, so that is the more potent form as opposed to a lavender extract. I don't actually know if I've seen lavender extract in skincare products. I almost always remember seeing the actual oil, so we know that it is a sensitizing and not good ingredient. A lot of people, this is my second point, a lot of people leave comments that say, um, oftentimes for ingredients that are associated kind of more with um, homeopathic or um, home remedy kind of situations, people want to say that no, these ingredients do have good effects on the skin, but those, those, the science doesn't support that. And just because something may make you feel calm, because I love the scent of lavender, lavender candles, my diffuser with the lavender oil, um, those kinds of things I love. But just because something has a calming effect on your mind or on your emotions, um, that is separate from whether they're gonna chemically have that effect on your skin. So leave the lavender oil for your diffuser, don't put it on your skin. And the third point I wanna make is I always get one or two comments from people that say, fragrance has never bothered me, fragrance is not that bad, why do you keep talking about why fragrance is bad? Well, A, because the science shows that it's bad, um, and B, just because you don't break out in hives or have a full face of cystic acne after an application of something that has fragrance in it doesn't mean that it's a negligible or benign ingredient. Just as if, you know, if I eat a bag of Cheetos, that doesn't mean that I'm immediately going to become sick or other effects, <laughs> um, but that we know that a bag of Cheetos is not healthy for your body. So it always surprises me how willing people are to just not pay attention to any science and just go off of the fact that a product may make them feel better, even though the science shows that it's not good for the skin on a chemical level. Um, and if, you know, it's one thing if you know that it's not great for your skin, but you wanna use it anyway and you make that decision, just like I know that eating Cheetos is not healthy for me, but I love hot Cheetos. So a good number of times throughout a month, I will eat Cheetos, even though I know it's not healthy. But that's different from saying, oh no, 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 you're wrong. This ingredient, the fragrance is not bad for the skin because in my experience, I've never had uh, a breakout from using a product that has fragrance. So just wanted to make those few points. Not going very well so far. Let's keep going. Hopefully we find a gem or two in here. Next is gonna be their Mineral SPF 30 Facial Moisturizer. Two fluid ounces for $9.97. It says it not only gives you that UV and UVB protection, but also helps moisturize. So let's check out the ingredients. So it's 12% zinc oxide, which is great. That is a proven sunscreen active for physical sunscreens. And when we go to the other inactive ingredients, Looks pretty good. We have some glycerin in there. We have the shea butter kind of in the middle of the ingredients list. And I don't see anything that jumps out to me as being super problematic. So this one, I think I would recommend. Um, it could definitely be bolstered by some more antioxidants to make it a more well-rounded well and robust good skin care product but it's $10 for two fluid ounces, um, which is a decent price for a sunscreen. And I don't see anything that jumps out as super bad for the skin. So would I recommend this product? Sure. Next up is the Rose Hip Jelly Face Cleanser. Six fluid ounces for $6.97. That seems like a really good uh, affordable level of affordability on that one. So the claim on this product says that it gently removes makeup, dirt, oil, and impurities. So obviously I can't assess that because I haven't actually tried out the product, so I won't speak to whether it effectively meets those claims or not. It says that for a detoxifying kick, that it's infused with certain ingredients. Mm, it seems more of a, an empty claim there, but let's go ahead and jump to the ingredients. So we have a good amount of that rose flower oil, which I guess shouldn't surprise us since it's in the name. Now, the rose flower is definitely a, an irritating plant extract. And again, it is used for the purpose of adding a fragrance. So this is not a great ingredient to have a lot of in a product. 
but there are a few things that I'll say where the my, my concern is mitigated. First of all, this is a cleanser. So it is a skincare product that compared to other skincare products, you will have in contact with your skin for a relatively short amount of time. So most of us, when we're using a cleanser, we don't have it on for longer than a handful of seconds, maybe up to 10, 15 seconds on the skin, and then we wash it off. So even if there are either good or bad ingredients in the product, they don't have a lot of time to have an effect on the skin and then they get removed. So whatever effect they are having is stopped after several seconds. So that's one thing that mitigates any harmful effect of the rose in this product. The other thing is, is that the rose oil and the rose plant itself are certainly not good ingredients. This is rose flower water, which seems to very strongly suggest that it's a, a very diluted form of perhaps the rose oil, or the rose ingredient. So that also likely reduces any harmful potential effect of the ingredient. Nevertheless, it's something this product would do better without having this in the product. Oh, but then we were followed very quickly by rose hip fruit oil. Now, I know this is maybe a little bit confusing because I just said that the rose oil is very bad. This is a di this is rose hip oil, which is different. Rose hip oil is actually very good for the skin. It's an antioxidant. It helps give the product like an, a, an emollient quality to help keep moisture in the skin. So rose hip oil, as opposed to like a rose flower oil, is a good plant extract. We're followed by several good fruit extracts and leaf extracts and seaweed extract is great, aloe is great, and I think for the rest of this seems pretty good, uh, geranial and citronellol. So citronellol, things like lanolol, um, are, have the same problems that the lemon extracts, lemon oils, citrus oils, things like that have. They are the last two ingredients in the ingredients list, so again, there is a small amount relative to the other ingredients in this product. So overall, would I recommend this product? Uh, I wouldn't actively recommend it, but I don't have as much of a problem with it as the first few products that we discussed for the reasons I discussed earlier, that the irritating ingredients are either small in quantity or more mild, and it's a cleanser, so it's not in contact with your skin for that long. So I don't have a huge issue with it, but I would still, if I were spending my money, I would still go out and buy a cleanser that didn't have these issues. Next up is the Coconut Water Hibiscus Glow Mist. 4.4 ounces at $6.97. It's meant to refresh, tone, and moisturize all in one. So we have coconut fruit water, the hibiscus flower extract. So hibiscus is kind of interesting because it is, it does fall in the category of those flagrant, uh, fragrant, not flagrant, <laughs> fragrant flower or plant extracts. So it does have that risk, although it does seem to be one of those that is actually giving your skin the antioxidant benefits and is a much more, has a much more, um, mild risk. I don't know if I'd call it risk, but the, there are there are good antioxidant properties to this product, even though it does fall in the category of a fragrant flower. So that one is still considered a, a good ingredient. Then we have the coconut fruit extract, again, the hibiscus, the willow bark extract is also soothing. Witch hazel, again, another interesting ingredient. It's not this fantastic ingredient that a lot of people who are more into quote unquote natural skincare seem to think it is. It does have antioxidant properties, but it can also be sensitizing. And the way that it is kind of manufactured and put into products also makes it problematic. So when you have a high amount of witch hazel in a product, it's not actually the best thing. The cucumber extract is good. So you have some apricot. We again run into this jasmine flower extract, which, we's are, which we've already talked about. So again, this one is kind of a mixed bag. Wouldn't say it's the worst option out there, but I don't know that I would actively seek the product or spend my money on it. Next up is going to be the grapefruit water gel moisturizer, two fluid ounces at $9.97. It's supposed to provide long lasting hydration and give you a refreshed feel with a lightweight gel formula. Again, we run into that grapefruit peel oil and tangerine fruit oil, orange peel oil, bergamot fruit oil. All of these are sensitizing 
fragrant, volatile ingredients. So we do not want to have that on our skin. This is not a product that I would recommend. Next up is the Coconut Water Hibiscus Face Wipes. So you get 25 wipes for $3.97. That seems like a pretty good deal for the wipes to uh, dollar ratio. The ingredients list coconut fruit water and extract, which is great. Hibiscus flower extract, which we already discussed. We run into the jasmine flower leaf extract again, which is problematic. The clove flower extract is not a great ingredient for the skin. It again can be a skin irritant. Overall, I wouldn't recommend these because the face wipes are something that you kind of really press into the skin. That's just kind of the nature of a face wipe as opposed to a, a cleanser where you may not have to use as much pressure with a wipe. A lot of times people are scraping them across the skin. So even though hopefully you will wash your skin after using a wipe, um, if you are someone who uses makeup wipes in place of actually washing your skin, this is definitely not a product you wanna use because you're leaving those sensitizing ingredients on the skin without washing them off. Even if you are someone who washes your face off after because you're using that pressure and kind of taking more time to press into the skin and wipe it over the skin, just get a fragrance-free version of, of a makeup wipe. Next is the Acai Facial Scrub, six fluid ounces for $6.97. It's supposed to be antioxidant rich and helps scrub away impurities. So anytime I hear scrub, I get a little hesitant because you have to be careful what kind of particles are in the product and make sure that those particles do not scrape the skin or create micro tears in the skin. Let's go down to the ingredients and see what they've included in here. Glycerin, which is nice. You have Phytelephus, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, Equatorialis seed powder. I don't know what this ingredient is, so I don't, I can't comment on whether it's good or bad. It seems to be the scientific name for an Ecuadorian ivory palm, but I don't know what kind of effect that would have on the skin. We do have safflower seed oil. We have acai pulp powder, acai fruit oil, avocado oil, Brazil nut oil. Okay, you have jojoba esters, which is um, a kind of common, ingre common ingredient for those little beads that you feel that will manually exfoliate the skin. And what's great about this is this is a particle that does not create micro tears on the skin. So if you have an ex a manual exfoliator, like a scrub that has jojoba esters in it, that's, that's the, the better option. So my only hesitation with this product is the unknown seed powder, because what happens is, for example, in like the St. Ives apricot scrub that used to be so popular for several years on YouTube until people started to actually look at the ingredients and discover that the crushed powder on those, the crushed uh, particles are, they're just like jagged edged little things that you're scrubbing across your skin and creating those tears and damaging it. Um, and sometimes they list it as something like avocado, or I don't know why I keep saying avocado, apricot seed powder even the powder is not smooth and uniform like a jojoba ester. So those still cause damage. So I guess I'm a little worried that maybe this unknown ingredient is falls into that category of something like an apricot seed powder. But if it doesn't, then I, I don't think that this is a problematic scrub at all. I just can't say for sure at the end of the day. Next up is the Moringa Body Butter, eight fluid ounces for $5.97. What a bargain, just in terms of the price point. So looking at the ingredients, it's largely coconut oil, which some people don't like that, but on an ingredients level isn't bad. It just isn't something that's very expensive. It's very, very cheap. Um, to to produce and to, to distribute. We have some glycerin and shea butter. All of these are kind of nourishing, hydrating ingredients, the moringa oil esters and cocoa seed butter. So at the beginning, you can see this is going to be a pretty rich, um, very nourishing formula. But then we run into the lavender flower extract and the grapefruit extract, orange, 
Um, let's see if there are any others here that are, pro oh, peppermint extract. Okay, things like menthol, eucalyptol, eucalyptus, peppermint, those are all extremely not only fragrant, but they're, they're, they're very actively irritating. That's why in those lip plumper products, they put things like menthol in there because it literally irritates the skin so much and so immediately that it causes the skin to inflame and create that plumped look. So we do not want that in a skincare product, especially in a product that's supposed to be slathered all over your body. So that's not good. So again, this is not a product that I would recommend. Next up is the White Clay Face Bar for 3.5 ounces. You'll pay $2.97. Before we jump into the ingredients, I would say a good rule of thumb is to not buy or use bars. Bar soaps, don't use them on your skin, definitely don't use them on your face. 98% of the bar soaps out there on the market are really kind of harsh on the skin. Drunk Elephant is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head that creates a bar soap that does not fall into that bad category. But unless you're buying that one, it's, it's a much safer rule just to follow. You just pass the bar soaps, go over to the gel cleansers, the cream cleansers, the milk cleansers, things like that. But let's go down and jump to the ingredients. So immediately you see that it starts with the sodium palmate and this is exactly falls within the example that I was just given. Sodium palmate is a cleansing agent that's very harsh on the skin. It's very drying and it's the very first ingredient. So immediately I would say no matter what else is listed in this bar, it's a majority gonna be that sodium palmate. Even the second ingredient you see is the sodium palm kernelate and um, that's basically the same thing. It's, it's, it's just a, a, a um, one degree next to the sodium palmate. So they do try to combat that by then including more hydrating ingredients like the glycerin, the uh, jojoba seed oil, and the shea butter. But you just, why, why even go through that process just by a body wash? Next up is the Blue Algae Hydrating and Turmeric Soothing Duo Sheet Mask. I'm intrigued by the name here. So it looks like you get two of them for $3.97. So they have two different sets of ingredients. Let's start with the blue algae one. Start out with that aloe, which is really nice, very soothing on the skin. Wow, glycerin, niacinamide, all good skincare ingredients. Shea esters, blue algae extract, also fantastic. Sodium hyaluronate. But then we have that orange peel extract, grapefruit seed extract. Um, lemon peel extract. So again, you're just, you're undoing the good soothing impacts of these first ingredients by then including these more volatile, irritating, harmful ingredients. How about the turmeric one? Let's jump to that one. Again, we start out really well with the aloe, glycerin, and niacinamide. Turmeric, also good for the skin, but once again, we run into that lemon peel extract, which is not great. We do have a uh, good cucumber extract, but then again, the grapefruit seed extract, orange peel extract. So once again, overall not masks that I would recommend as the best choice. Next up, we have the cooling eggplant eye balm for half an ounce. It is $9.97. So I think the most expensive thing in the line. It says it's supposed to help energize the area of the eye. When we look at the ingredients, we have mm, aloe leaf, eggplant fruit extract, glycerin. Ooh, we have some algae extract in there, coconut oil, coffee seed extract, turmeric root extract, green tea. I think overall this looks pretty good. I am a little bit concerned, especially with the basil flower or leaf extract, which I'm pretty sure is a fragrant, uh, like a fragrant leaf extract. Then we have before that the Globularia alpum or alipum leaf extract. 
the Aerioforum Spinsis. I don't even know how to pronounce these names, but these also, uh, they seem like they're also flower extracts, so potentially fragrant. So those do make me nervous. Um, so I don't know that I could say that I would roll the dice on this and knowing that also the basil is in there. I don't think I'd roll my dice on this. And last up are the fragrance-free wipes. This is, it sounds like it comes in a bundle. I don't know, I didn't see that they sell these individually, but you get two packs of wipes for $7.94, and each pack contains 25 wipes. The ingredients, much shorter list of ingredients. We have water, aloe leaf juice, citric acid. So this is a far superior option to the other wipes that they have. I would definitely recommend these hands down over the other option in the clean beauty line. Okay, so at least as of making this video, I have gone through with you every single product that clean beauty has available. Overall, pretty disappointing. I can only remember one, maybe two of the products that I would actually actively perhaps recommend. Even then, I think the, was it the, it was the sunscreen, right? That I said, oh yeah, this is good. But even then it's not something that's super exciting because it's, it's more that it didn't have anything bad in it as opposed to, oh wow, this is a really jam packed, great for you skincare ingredients type of product. And that's the overall feeling that I get from Clean Beauty. You have a lot of problematic ingredients, a lot of the same problems recurring through most of the items that they have in the brand. The way that this brand could be vastly improved and would be such a gem to be available at this price point at Walmart would be get rid of the citrus oils and extracts, get rid of the lavender oil, and get rid of any sort of alcohols that you have or other drying agents that you have in the line. I hope this video was helpful to you, that you enjoyed, that it saves you money in the long run. Uh, please leave any thoughts that you have in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next one.